welcome to 3D HP. My name is Jerry, and in today's video, we have the Jimitsu 4th Axis Rotary Module Kit, which pairs with my Jimitsu, same, my 4040 CNC from SaneSmart. They sent me this out to test and review at no charge, but all opinions are my own. Let's take a look at what we got in the package. User, use, user manual it explains how to bolt it down and how to use the offline controller. Two wrenches for tightening up the chuck. One cable for hooking up the machine. Bolts and a few Allen wrenches for tightening up. Seems to be very well built. MEMA 17 on the end. On your Jimitsu 4040 CNC, there are countersunk threaded holes where you can mount this unit to get it perfectly square with the frame. And then there's adjustments where the end of this chuck you can set three different positions. Take a look at the offline controller. You've got a cord for hooking it up. USB drive. And controller. Connector to hook it up. It looks like mounting screws if you choose to mount it on something. Let's get this all hooked up um, and we'll get going. Okay, we've got the rotor all mounted with four bolts. I've got two here on each side of the bed. And then over on the NEMA 17, we took the one connector, we plugged it in right here, and that runs to the back of your control box where it says A access. There's a plug right here, and you plug that in right there. The other cord from the controller simply plugs in the back, and it plugs in on the front where it says controller right here, and you plug that in. And now we're ready to power it on and test it out. Well, that almost got done, as you've seen. I guess when I homed my Z, when I had it right down here to the point, and I got it exactly right, I didn't have it perfectly homed, and didn't have it exactly right, so when it was cutting off this tip on this side, I should have left a little bit of material, raised up, went over here, and cut it all, cut it most of the way down, to leave the, a little bit on both sides. It wound up going all the way through, and because I had pressure on this, it kind of was starting to bind up, so I hit the emergency stop on it. You know, that live and learn. Um, I had originally taken the one file, not five or ten files they should have given you, 
I took the one test file, I put it in Candle on my PC over there, and I was trying to run it in Candle. I tried to run it twice in Candle, and the strangest thing happened. Well, the NC file, I zeroed everything out on the center point right here on my Z, and then I had my, uh, I had my Y and everything set up just right and zeroed out. I had my bit on top of the material over here on the right side. Once I ran the job, it lift up. It come over here and I'm going to start engraving, which is unbeautiful since I had a brand new bit at that time. It would get about halfway on that ball. Twice that happened to me, and then it would lift up, and the Z would lift up so high it would trip the limit switch, which would throw an alarm and candle, and it would stop the program. So it's like, what the hell is going on? I could not figure out for the life of me why that was happening. So, I took the uh, micro SD card, I put it in my offline controller, after many, many minutes, many, many minutes, let's say, of reading and looking around, or actually days, trying to figure out how to use the offline controller, I finally figured it out. And with the offline controller, once again, I zeroed out the bit right here, but I didn't, obviously I didn't have it exactly right, or this wouldn't have happened. And then I ran the job with the offline controller, and it was doing a beautiful job. The reason you see burning, I'm running a bit on speed setting 4 on the Makita, and I had a bunch of failures with this bit, and it kind of burned up the bit. So the bit was almost bad when I started this job. It's looking beautiful here, and then it starts going brown. And I just let it run, see if it'd complete the job. And it would have. It would have completed it, and then I'd have to throw the bit away. It's a 1 8 uh, upcut bit, spiral. And it almost finished. What do I think of this? Well, it's a cool little unit. I mean, the 4040 is not very wide, so this rotary is not that big. Um... The four teeth here are reversible. You can unscrew these. They even have a video online on their website that shows how to do it. You unscrew them. You can take each one out. They're neighbor, and, uh, numbered one through four. So if you need to grab the inside of your material or the outside of your material, whichever way, you can reverse these. As long as your material, whether it be square or round, doesn't hit the bottom plate here, because then obviously you can't rotate. You can put square stock on this, and you can turn it round, and depending on what software program you're using, or you can buy round material, which I did. I went down to Lowe's. Uh, yesterday I bought some poplar. And this is about four foot long. Piece of poplar. I'm not sure how big it is. But it's about that big. Now I'm going to, I'll mark a center mark with my tape measure and a pencil. And I'll put it, I'll cut them down to the right length. And then I'll put it in my uh, drill press. I'll drill a hole down the center. Then I'll take some dowel wood that I have some here laying around, and I'll glue a dowel in there. That way I have something to grip. Now, as small as that is, it might work in the chuck. I haven't tried, but that might just work. But that's one option. Or you can take some 2x2s two you might have laying around, or 2x4s, and or even glue them together if you have to and clamp them. And then you can cut them down on your table saw or your uh, chop saw. And you can put that material in here. And depending on the software program you're using, you can take that square material and you can round it, make it round, and then run your job. Now, the test file that came with this works from right to left. It does not work from left to right. Because I tried that the other day, where I homed everything over here on the right, standing by emergency stop button. The minute the bit lifted up, it took off and started heading towards the chuck. So I had to hit the emergency stop. So this file was designed to work from the right side to the left side. And like I said, I tried it twice in Candle, and it would get so far along. Um, running this, when you load up Candle, you've got to run this command right here on the command line. I'll put it here on the screen to get everything set up right. And uh, yeah, you home out your XYZ. Like I say, your Z is right here. And uh, I believe it's, what is the, anyway, the Y. Anyway, I don't know, it's a cool little unit. Um, and like I say, the only cons I have is they should have included some sample material with this to work with. So you wouldn't have to buy some, because a lot of people may not have stuff laying around. So they could have sent three or four dowels with it. And they should have had at least a half dozen, if not a dozen, test files for people to work with. Because the software required, which I'll list some of the companies here on the screen, this different software right here is pretty spendy. Anywhere from $200 to $600. So, you know, not everything is free. Now, if you work with Fusion, I guess you can use Fusion. I don't know much about Fusion. And it's a, quite a steep learning curve. You can design files in Fusion that will work. But for the price, it's a very well-built, nice little machine. Offline controller, I used it this one time. It worked fine. I prefer to work out of uh, from UGS, Universal G-Code Sender, uh, G-Sender, or Candle on my computer. That's how I prefer to do it. And then I just tether like a 25-foot line over to my uh, machine here. But, 
yeah, pretty cool little machine. Like it, enjoy it. Um, yeah, I guess that's about all I can say. Oh, yeah, one other thing here. They sent me out a set of their bits to try out. The Jumetsu bits are one eighth shank. They're two two flute spiral ball nose. Ball nose. It should be up cut and down cut. Personally, I think they're all up cut. And then it's got some corn shaped end mills, um, titanium coated and nano blue coating are on these. There's four little packs. I believe these sell for around forty dollars. I've tried these from other companies, and I've only used a couple, uh, one or two of these so far, and. So far, they're working out really good. Nice little packaging they come in. You might want to check these out. There'll be blink links below on Amazon where you can find this stuff at or on their website. Here, here will be some, some pics right here at the end of the video from the company on all the specs on this machine. I'll show them here on the screen. But yeah, pretty cool. But at the very least, include the whole chess set. <laughs> that way if somebody gets this and they can't afford to buy the software right away and you don't have a free trial to the software, which you can do wrapping in, where you can take an SDL file that you download and you can basically, the program will lay it out lay it out straight and you can configure everything. You should have a whole bunch of test files to go with this setup. And so throw in some material. So, some supplies. It would be really cool. But I'm pretty happy with it. I, like I say, I can't afford to buy the software right now, so I have to figure out how I'm going to make more projects with it. Because it's pretty spendy and I don't know Fusion. So, if you have any opinions, uh, please leave me a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. Um, don't bash me. Yes, I'm a noob. Yes, I don't know much about this and I'm learning. And yes, if you have a video about a spindle out there, or a rotary, I probably already watched it. Because I've been watching everybody's. Dave Gatton had some great videos on using his spindle that he has, a bigger, larger one. How he homed everything. He has done some videos on this. Detail. And uh, he's helped me out a lot just by me watching his videos. So I appreciate all the people out there that make content. Like I'm a content creator creator also and you know people learn from me and I learn from other people and all big happy world so uh, until next time please like subscribe share I plan on doing more content on this as soon as I find a program that I can use or I can afford to do it and if you'd like to see more of this just check out these pictures right here at the end uh, have an awesome day later